everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. I'm your host Phoenix and today I'm joined with one of my regular co-hosts on this little series, my good old friend Jolene. Hello. Are you glad to be back? Yes. Yeah, it's been a crazy weekend. We were partying, we were going to raves. We were, I don't know, partaking in the alcohol. I don't know, we were just being nerds at an anime convention. That's all we did this weekend. <laughs> I don't remember going to a rave or drinking any alcohol. Oh, uh, yes, I, I definitely had boba, though. Oh. I thought you said boba. I don't think I stayed any later than maybe four or five. You know, I don't blame you, man. You just get that, just get the Artist Alley stuff and just book it out of there, man. Her Sally's where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the, fuck, the wheel was spun. It, it spun did, and it landed it on this re cool religion called Waluigiism, if, it, if anyone's ever heard of that <laughs> before. It's basically mm -hmm. a, a, a fan fiction where they just took Bible stories and they put in Mario characters. So, canonically, Lu Waluigi is Jesus. And I wouldn't have it any other way, man. <laughs> of course. I I remember a lot of people thought you were you were People Waluigi thought I was Jesus. Again. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I, I was um I thought I thought you were like, yeah, people mistake you for Jesus. <laughs> no, on Friday I really hope did you see Jesus at the convention? I did see Jesus. Literally we he passed and like we and my sister crossed ourselves. <laughs> Very nice. While well, well, I was at He's the convention, a very kind uh, man. While well, I was at the convention Friday, I dressed up as SMG three, and I got mistaken four times as Waluigi. So <laughs> good for me, I guess. Cosplay failed successfully. <laughs> hey, was it? I, I was. It was a little bit like funny because I was like at the very top by the ballrooms looking down at like the main entrance and at the bottom <coughs> fuck i'm joking <laughs> <coughs> at the bottom like a waluigi cosplayer saw me and started waving at me thinking i was also a waluigi <laughs> but i didn't want to be like an asshole so i was just waving back and smiling <laughs> oh god all right, so we're we're on chapter five of this so far, and honestly, it is pretty good. But my only problem is, is that I can't <coughs> I can't read. <laughs> That's literally my only issue with this. <laughs> All right. Uh oh yeah, here it is. I found my coin. It's actually a half dollar because I'm fancy like that apparently. Wow. Do you want to be heads or tails? I'll be tail. Alright. It sails! And so, Dio began his training with the monk. The first training exercise was to lie flat on the ground and then press the floor away from himself into a crescent. The exercise was called training arc. At first, Dio could barely lift himself off the ground and collapse covered in sweat due to the consistent pressure being applied to his core. With each subsequent pose of training, Dio grew more and more sure that they were meant to, in to be immensely physically taxing. The exercises were optimized to form lean muscle mass through the segment form of the Wiggler. The Wiggler monks did not realize how much harder this training was for Dio with his different physique and metabolism. As a, ten as a tangential consequence of this, they were truly astonished at the volume of food Dio consumed at mealtime. And Dio especially liked the taste of the flavored buns that were made in the monastery. Dio became so infamous in this regard that people began referring to him as Bao Su, meaning Bun Master. After a while, it became easier for Dio to just embrace the moniker, so he gradually chose to refer to himself as Bao Su, rather than the name he'd been given at birth. But, despite his supposedly high key count, whatever that meant, he was unable to perform any of the warrior arts 
shown him by the monk, although he was supposed, supposedly imbued with fire by that weird troped spirit. Bao could only muster a faint glow P.F. and ember when he tried to mimic the wiggler art of fire breathing. And at his and in his impatience, Bao requested to see the art scroll so he could learn them himself. We're apt not to give in to this request, for the first Zen principle that they would teach to novices is the intangibility of knowledge. If Bao were shown the documents without internalizing their this principle, then he would view the arts as having some concrete form rather than an abstract principle that could be built upon it and developed over time. But Bao grew impatient with this restriction, for he knew that his people were suffering and felt obligated to rescue his people as soon as possible. So, one night, once the monks were all asleep, he snuck into the scroll room through an open window, noting that it had become difficult to fit through because how much bulkier he had become and Shell had also been able to fit, even though it had grown to accommodate his figure. However, once he had finally entered the room, he noticed that there was a light emanating from the other side of the room between many bookshelves. And Bao became still as he feared he would be discovered and abandoned by his master. But then he listened in the direction of the light and heard a conversation. A tree of thieves were asking each other where they thought the shadow scroll, shadow, the shadow clone art scroll was located. Dio then looked on the desk next to the window and saw a scroll titled New Applications of Key to Optimize the Formation of Elusive Form, and realized that the thieves were after the scroll. Seeing that opportunity to impress his masters, Bao immediately resolved to protect the scroll. So, Bao picked it up and jumped out the window. Perhaps Bao was startled by the presence of outsiders in the monastery. For he did not take care in his exit and tore a sizable hole in the windowsill with his poking figure. Alerted to the fact that they were not alone by large tearing noise, one of the intruders immediately raised the suggestion that the other thief had taken the scroll before them. Not wanting to be outdone, they chased after Bao into the poison jungle. Because of the immense physical prowess he had gained, her he had gained from his training, Bao was able to make a speedy escape to the surrounding jungle the surrounding jungle. Bao then climbed a tree, believing that he would be safer if the intruder thought he had gone further. And, using his own defective key, art of mimicking the light of embers, he read the scroll. Now, Bao had misjudged how much he had grown at the monastery. Thieves had no trouble following the telltale imprints of Bao's feet. In the jungle undergrowth, the top branches of Bao's tree then collapsed under his weight, and without warning he fell onto the thieves. Because Bao landed Shell first, the Koopa Blessing from the Fallen Star greatly lessened the impact. But Bao could see that the thieves were Samurai Goomba, who, who were protected by Samurai Helmets, and that they were recovering very quickly from being fallen on. Panicked because of his lack of fighting experience, Bao did the only thing he could think of. He tried to use a sour, Shadow Clone art to make it copies of himself so he could escape. However, he did not appear to have made a single copy of himself and decided to run back to the monastery and alert the Wiggler monks. When the first Goomba reoriented, reoriented himself, he began rushing after Bao, though for some reason he felt slightly heavier than usual. When the second and third Goomba came to, they saw Bao running away and rushed after him. The second Goomba caught back up to Bao and stabbed his back through the weak point of his scoot with a katana. The Bao being chased and turned around to see the third Goomba catch up and pierce his katana through Bao's heart. The ecstasy of the two Goomba samurai because of the supposed reclamation of the Shadow Scroll was immediately replaced with the anguish when Bao reverted to his true form of the first Goomba samurai. Realizing the Wiggler monks were likely to have already been awoken, the two Goomba decided to escape. For them, either attempting to face the Wiggler monks or returning to the Goomba Shogun, empty-handed with both results and death. When Bao first woke Ritao, he was confused to why Bao was holding the Shadow Clone Scroll. Why would Bao admit to his disloyal actions sneaking into the library when it would dissuade the monks from continuing to train him? Knowing the danger of the Gulba Samurai posed, Ri left half of the Wiggler monks to the, to the place where they had last been seen. Half the monks had been left at the monastery to protect it and the sacred knowledge it held. 
Upon seeing the Zumba corpse, Ri immediately knew what occurred. He re asked Bao how he knew that using the shadow copy art to transform one of the Zumbas into a copy of himself would work. Bao replied asking why the shadow clone art did not merely create a key clone that existed as one one's own individual identity. You've been reading too much manga, responded Ri. Obviously creating a sentient shadow puppet would be impossible because the shadow clone is a merely is merely an object without a soul and cannot be made to mimic the agency of a person. Rather, the art scrolls allow users to place a key spell on others that make them appear to have the form of the key user. It was very impressive of Bree that Bao had mastered the hand movements needed to apply the art after reading the scroll only once. So, out of respect for Bao's mission, to emancipate the Koopa tribe from the human empire, Ri allowed Bao to read the scroll. Bao set to work on optimizing his key fire breathing ability. When he read the fire breathing art scroll, Bao realized that if it was designed for use on designed for use by the Wigglers, the will the Wigglers were able to channel their key through their body. So it had the momentum when it exited their mouths in the form of a flame. Because Bao's body only had one compartment, as opposed to the many segments of a wiggler. He would have to develop a new and innovative way of expelling his key. As he was rinsing his mouth after brushing his teeth one night, Bao observed that he was pushing the water in an infinity pattern. Perhaps he could channel his key inside his mouth so it would build his momentum before exiting his body. So, the next day, Bao trained hard at directioning the key in two-dimensional circular pattern inside his mouth. However, the circular orbit seemed unable to sustain itself due to the inherent key entropy in the key flow. However, by applying constant pressure to the key flow in the direction of a central location, Bao was able to form a key fireball. The success of this technique shocked Ri, who immediately knew he had nothing left to teach Bao, and Bao was about to set off to leave the Wiggler Monastery and liberate his people. At that moment, a Goomba messenger arrived to inform the Wiggler monks that the poison jungle were being rezoned into a suburb. God damn, all these rich people coming down, chopping down the trees, putting up a suburb. <laughs> I bet it's gonna have an HOA. This would mean that. <coughs> oh god. This would mean that the land would have become more valuable, and the monks had no longer been able to afford the lease of the <coughs> monastery unless they refrained from religious practice. The monks had initially decided to locate themselves in the jungle because they were immune to the poison and they would be isolated away from worldly things. The market rate for renting the land was very low because no one else wanted to live in the poison swamp. However, advances in Goomba infrastructure and city planning meant the Goomba Shogunate had a long-term economic incentive to construct a road through the poison jungle and open and maintain trading routes with a nearby mushroom kingdom. As such, the center of Poison Jungle would need to have its infrastructure developed so that it could act as a gateway to the regional commercial hub. Because the workers in the forest need somewhere to stay, the obvious thing to do was build suburbs, and to maintain the value of the houses that were being built, foreign religious tradition would need to be eliminated. When he heard this line of reasoning from the Goomba, Bao was very confused. It made no sense to him that the construction of suburbs was a productive way to provide accommodation to people. Not only did suburbs have disproportionate negative environmental impacts, they also exponentially increased commute times and facilitated self-separation of people of higher socioeconomic status. This, this in turn, would surely we would Are we surely a weaken. history lesson? <laughs> we don't even worry about it. This feels like I'm We're reading someone's essay right now it. on like on like economics of housing. <laughs> um, just no fuck suburb. Anyway, this in turn would surely weaken social institutions and relegate the most vulnerable people in society to areas with poor social and economic infrastructure. Additionally, the country the cultural effect of this segregation would ultimately result in a more divided society due to the dim diminution of interactions between people of different socioeconomic statuses. Case in point, for the fact that the peaceful cultural minority of the Wiggler monks were being effectively expelled from land that they had developed and protected because of the self-serving interests of the Goomba majority. Additionally, the idea that some well-off Goombas 
could own the land in the poison jungle when it had little economic or personal use for it highlighted the inherent unfairness of a system solely dedicated to preserving in the to preserving the permanence of property ownership. Fuck the Goombas. Stop gentrifying shit. Anyway, that was the dilemma that the Wigglers were facing was an allegory for issues of personal and cultural identity. As societies grow in more interconnected, the cost of maintaining a district and individual cultural identity increases. While some adaptations of customs can bring greater tolerance and self-awareness, the continual development of a society demands extensive and continuous adjustment of tradition. Bow thought of a common Kong refrain from Noah's spaceship. If every part of a if every part in a spaceship were placed over many years, then they would then the spaceship would remain the same. Surely it had never stopped being the original spaceship, but if all the pieces had been replaced that had been replaced were formed into a second spaceship, it would wouldn't it be identical to the original spaceship? In this case, both spaceships are arguably the original. Just like the spaceship, a culture that has changed by its circumstances is both distinct from and rightfully and distinct from in the rightful continuation of the original tradition. However, there's also the question of how the supposedly original tradition gains its legitimacy after it's been recreated. <sighs> Though the Wigglers had built a home in their monastery, they never really owned the land. The foundation of their economic well-being depended on the goodwill of an external political force. Similarly, the Wigglers might identify as Zen practitioners, but they were ultimately subordinate to the beliefs dictated by their historical scrolls. There was nothing physical stopping the monks from altering how they practiced their beliefs, but they felt as if they deviated too far from the documented teachings. Then, if ah, uh, they felt as if they if they deviated too far from the documented teachings, then they would no longer be able to justify their association with their cultural group. Likewise, the physical and social circumstances of an indiv individual are inter interconnected with the ways they are enacted. They enacted their traditions. If a singular wiggler decided that they no longer believed the existing cultural narrative, then they would be removed from the group in much the same way that the wiggler monks are being expelled from the rezoned neighborhood. Hence, cultural dominates the individual as society dominates culture. Freedom for the individual demands both the right to own land and maintain a distinct ideology. If the same rights are extended to groups, then individuals will ultimately be restricted. Of course, we cannot exist in a purely archaic society with no centralized delegation of planning and resources. Consequentially, it's clear that societal arbiters need to be accounted to, accounted, uh, need to be accounted to the needs and voice of the people. Damn, I like how you took 15 minutes to read that, while I'm gonna read this next chapter and it's gonna take me 45 minutes <laughs> to get through this. Look at me, pro. If you want to switch, feel free, because I absolutely adore reading that. Dude, I'm, I gotta say, this, this book needs more reads. This chapter 6 has 14, 14 views. 14 people read this. I guess now 16, because me and you are on, on, on this page now, but you're, you're telling me mm -hmm. only, only 14 people made it this far? Are you serious? SMH in my head. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna Yeah, push but her. if you need to switch at any part, let me know. Alright, I'm gonna if you push want me, her. Do you want me to correct you, or do you, are you gonna, are you good? Feel free to correct me on anything. If I'm like, if I'm, if I'm struggling, <laughs> please gotcha. help a homie out. <laughs> I got it. Boa? Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Bow. Bow? Okay, cool, I already fucked up. <laughs> Not even past the first <laughs> word. Fuck, how did you say it again? Because I'm already going to, like, BOA. <laughs> bow. Bow. Like, B-A. Bow. 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 Okay, but... Bow, cons bow considered whether he could say... B-A-O. Bow. Bow. <laughs> bow. <laughs> Fuck, it. Fuck it, I'm just gonna call them BOA for <laughs> BOA considered whether he could 
stay and help the monks protect their land, but realized that there was no way he could fight with an entire Goomba military. Even three Goomba samurais were in, had put his life at risk despite his training. The Goomba army... Oh, sorry. The, the Goomba military in the surrounding regions would probably arrest him on sight for murder if he entered the Goomba... Shig... Shig... Shiganate? Shig... Shiganate. Shiganate. Shogun. Oh, sh That's so true. How did I not te connect those two? <laughs> the Goomba Shoten prop proper. Therefore, his only option was to travel southwest into the Mushroom Kingdom before considering how he would find his way back to his birthplace. So, Bo adventured well into the Mushroom Kingdom and came across a toad village. He, As he approached, the sun began to set, so Boa decided that he might as well stay at the local inn. At first, the toad innkeeper was... Protudin? Perturbed. Perturbed on how Boa would be able to fit into an ordinary toad-sized bed. Wow, these people are fucking like... I don't know. What, what, what is the... Well, he's big. But the cell, man, you don't gotta be. He just wants a place to sleep. Eventually, they agree that eight sleep, eight sleeping mats. How big is this guy? <laughs> well, think about how small toads are. I, I thought you saw the Mario movie. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're like a little shorter than Mario, but like not that small. <laughs> They're itty bitty. I don't know what you're talking about. They're like th they're like two two feet or two inches. And they're like, oh my god, this guy's huge, man. He must look like a giant when he goes throughout the village. He must stand out like crazy. <laughs> Eventually, they agreed that eight sleeping mats would be laid in the dining room for Boa to rest. The next morning, over breakfast, Boa asked the innkeeper how the toads per. Cool. I, I that's that's really interesting. Well, you, you see a new species, and you're like, so, like, how do you guys, like, breed? <laughs> Boa thought that toes produce asexually through spores. Oh my god, here, look, it's my, it's my asexual representation, Jolene. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, toads be representing the group right now, thank you. <laughs> they thought they produce asexually through spores because they are mushrooms and are and was quite confused that the toads apparently had genders. The innkeeper explained that the female toad would lay a spore egg and give it to her partner to fertilize. The male toad would then be expected to cover the egg in a protective layer of bricks and attach it to a, f a floating question mark block that, that ants could not reach the egg. <laughs> that- I'm trying to think of like what that reminds me of. I guess like the Yoshi eggs, because sometimes when you're playing the game, you like hit a block like that, and a Yoshi egg comes out and hatches. So would you like hit one and like a toad hatches out of it, like a little baby? Oh yeah, like the un the um, the the toads that aren't ready are like the one up, and yeah. the the one that makes you big, oh my and God. you know. That's so fucked up, Jolene. Keep reading. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the innkeeper then complained about how members of the human tribe would annoyingly break toad f uh, feces? What'd I just say? Oh my god. Fetuses. Fetus- Okay. I fetuses. didn't even read that. Fetuses out of the bricks. It could soon them to gain extra strength because of their blessing from the fallen star. Wow. You fucking- You're like- You're like, yes. I thought you were just being morbid. <laughs> no. Oh, damn, bitch. <laughs> It struck Boa as strange how nonchalant the innkeeper was about a course of action that he would consider genocide. Consider genocide. Wait, a genocide. Genocidal. Gen oh, thank you. Genocidal. Gen genocidal. It appeared that the toad was unable to feel any anger. Boa's best guess was that the toad's creation myth endangered a cultural aversion. Yeah, aversion to anger within the toads. For it was anger that expelled the toad tribe from the cave of dankness. <laughs> or do, do, do they mean like dankness or do they mean darkness? Because honestly, that's cooler. It's the cave of dankness. You can only be in the cave if you're dank as shit. <laughs> do you know what dank is? Like a dank, dark place? No. I thought it was like a meme thing for a second. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. 
Because I hear people go like, damn, that meme was fucking dank, bro. That's a dank meme. I thought that's what they, <laughs> that's what they meant. You can tell I have brain rot. <laughs> but what I see... It is unpleasant, moist, or humid. Oh. Damn, I'm just stupid then, huh? <laughs> Poa asked the innkeeper why her response to the consumption of fetuses was so weak. The innkeeper responded by pointing out that the fetuses are not self-aware and could not feel pain, but it was that it was annoying when her hard work was wasted. Besides, she argued, with the Mushroom Kingdom's current alliance with the human empire, there is no way to bring about, uh... Repercussions. Reper Fuck yeah. Sorry if you can hear the dogs. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Someone just, I don't know, I don't know, leaf outside. <laughs> this was the first Boa was hearing of such an alliance, and it sickened him to his core. Because the innkeeper did not seem to know why or how the alliance was formed, Boa thought it was best to venture into the Mushroom Castle to get some answers. It should be noted that by leaving the village, Boa avoided having to develop any deeper into an issue somehow familiar to abortion and remained impartial about the extent to which the consumption of toad eggs presented a breach of basic moral values. I'm like, I was just saying, I'm like, God, this feels like a like an abortion almost. Like, they don't feel pain and they just get eaten. <laughs> I was like, nah, I won't say that. They're not gonna bring up abortion. <laughs> I love that this book not only just like it just takes like Bible stories and like revamps them into like a Mario X kind of thing, but also it brings like real issues that we deal with nowadays of like like just before when you were reading like the whole subor thing and like the separation between classes and I'm like damn that is actually is very real. <laughs> now we're talking about a bush. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what like the other topics that were brought up in the other chapters that I cannot remember. As Boa approached the mushroom capital, he observed that statues of the Toad Queen had been taken down. It appeared that as though the old statues were being replaced with those of a human woman. Oh my, is this Peach? How old, how far back are they talking when they're like sitting around the volcano and they're like, Man, I remember the old days. It was like two years ago. <laughs> Boa inquired with the the toad workers as to why they were putting up statues of a monarch who was not from their tribe. And the workers responded that the statues were their monarch Queen Matriarch. Toadstool. Oh, thank you. Matriarch Queen Toadstool, who had been transformed with a key, key artifact magic to appear as a human. Even more confused, Boa questioned why she would do such a thing. The toad tribe had a proud heritage and would and it would seem strange to him that any group would be willingly devoted uh, de deviate. deviate from their cultural beliefs and s and sub oh, fuck subordinate thank you subordinate themselves to an evil human tribe what Bo was unaware of is that the wholesale destruction of the toad military by the human tribe and their ruthless use of power ups and the Toad tribe felt so inferior that when they looked outwards that they adopted the mannerisms and cultural iconography iconography thank you iconography of human em of the human empire itself and during that time when Bo had been running a successful sand sheep small business the human empire realized that it would be more efficient for them to accept the toad kingdom efficiently subordinate effectively Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Effectively subordinate. Effectively. Sovereignty. Thank you. Sovereignty. Rather than accept to ex exert. exert full control of the toad people. Why are these- I swear I made it through high school. I, I, I promise. <laughs> Did you like- <laughs> Dude, I struggled in English. Like when we started high school, like I didn't even get to be in like Eng like English one. I started an introduction to English. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, I sucked. <laughs> Isn't that like a full year course? No, it was like you did it like I. That was like the first semester I had as a freshman, and then the next semester I actually got to be in English one. I just sucked that so bad. I had two, two semesters. Yeah. 
I suck yeah. that bad at English. So they were like, I need you to take this intro to English before you take English one. <laughs> Boa then noticed that several human soldiers were sitting in a nearby cafe eating... Oh, I thought... <laughs> eating co coffee eclairs. I, I read eclairs wrong. I thought they said that they were eating coffee chairs. And I'm like, what the fuck? Hey. I imagined it as like the scene from... Uh, from One Piece when they go to Whole Cake Island and like Luffy and Chopper eat an entire fucking house <laughs> because it's made out of chocolate. <laughs> but I, I was like... <laughs> the more he looked, the more Boa saw humans giving uh, patronage to all the toad shops. Boa then observed that there were several of the new human airships anchored on top of the Mushroom Castle. This level of military presence concentrated in one place what not one piece anyway in one place surely meant war but the toast seemed un unconcerned with everything that had been going on the human tribe was not going to use its army on the mushroom kingdom they were getting ready to declare war, war on the goomba uh on the goomba tribe <laughs> i'm not gonna try again <laughs> but would have wouldn't have time to travel there and warn the goomba by foot so he would have to go by air. Earlier that night, Boa climbed into the tip of the mushroom castle and then up the chain that connected one of the airships to its anchor. There were only a few humans on board, probably because humans were often seasick while in the air, so they preferred staying on the ground. Boa was easily able to pick the remaining humans up while they were sleeping and throw them over the edge of the dam. <laughs> They're just peacefully sleeping, they wake up because they've- their spine's broken now. <laughs> you know, maybe they don't have to wake up. Oh yeah, they just die on impact. <laughs> mm-hmm. And everyone, like, the next morning, they're like, oh, they're, they're sleeping. They had a good night last night. They just passed down the street, and the guy's got, like, a concussion. <laughs> a concussion? I'm one sure he's a lot more a concussion. concussion. <laughs> or at least one survives. It's gotta be possible. Uh, you know, if that's what you want to think, yeah. I'll let you be a little hopeful. Thank you. Oh yeah, and there's lots of okay. Boa then went to the engine room and saw that there was only another ten hours of coal left in the ship. Because it would take about a day to reach the Guma capital, Boa would need another source of heat. For the next 28 hours, Boa alternately alternated between using his Kia fireballs and the coal preserves the power in, in the airship. Oh shit, to power the airship, I <laughs> But I remembered that the monks had taught him that Kia was not to be used uh, continuously. I can, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Phoenix can read. Holy shit. Continuously for more than a hundred minutes. But he had no choice if he wanted to oppose the human military. The fire from the burning shrub must have uh, omitted, augmented, augmented his ability beyond their limit. Augment. Augmented. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like August and then mented. Augmented. Augmented. Jolene, you're teaching me so many good words. And <laughs> I'm so glad we're reading this and he used more big words. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I need like a Duolingo for that. Of like, I Duolingo for like me learning another language, and then I need some other one that tells me like new words. I need, I need that. Just read more fanfic. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. I actually like right before we started the call, I was like, oh my god, I found another SMG34 fanfiction. I'm gonna read this. Oh my god. <laughs> I kid you not. I was like, just, just read it. Just okay, I'll just, I'll just keep going. read the Bible. Okay, I'm trying to read the Bible. <laughs> Wait, if this is like like straight up like the Bible, does that mean the final chapter is gonna be Waluigi getting hung on like the cross and like bleeding out? I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, <laughs> if it does, he hasn't even shown up yet. Well, he's Jesus. He shows up whenever he wants. Wait a minute. I'm realizing if they do make Waluigi Jesus, who's giving birth to Waluigi? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. This is too many unanswered questions until later. A young Goomba in the Goomba capital named, uh, Nar 
Naruto? Naruto. Oh, Naruto, okay. Oh, I know that, it's an anime. <laughs> Naruto was awakened early in the morning by what sounded like- Naruhito. Oh, Naruhito. God damn it. <laughs> Woken up it's early- Down at the letters. I can't read, all right? <laughs> Was woken up early in the morning by the sound, what sounded like ten thousand paragumbas. Oh, paragumbas, my bad. Naruhito then opened the window and saw a floating castle of wood levitating throughout, through the motion of circular propellers. This was perhaps the most ab abnormal thing that has ever happened to Naruhito. Yeah, Naruhito. So he went outside to greet the castle's inhabitants. And the wooden castle landed in the center square of the Goomba capital. Naruhito approached the castle and saw the hatch on the on its side open. Out of the castle emerged what Nagahito could only describe as a dragon turtle. It had fiery red hair and a giant shell that had holes in the middle of the scales. And Nagahito went up to the turtle and asked it its name, for Nagahito's parents had taught him to be kind to strangers. The turtle replied with his name being Bautus. Tus. Bautus. Bautus. When Bao said this, Nagi. Tu. Fuck! <laughs> Tus. Tu. No, it's not Tu. <laughs> it's Zu. Zu? Zu. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was pronouncing the fucking T. My yeah. bad. <laughs> Zu. <laughs> no, I mean, you know what? Zu is bad. <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> when Boa said this, Naruhito heard the word Bowser because the Goomba del dialect? Yeah, the Goomba's dialect had different emphasis on the syllables and words. Before Naruhito could ask Bowser any more questions, he passed out. What, like... Bowser passed out, or okay, or the I don't know. Oh my god, this I love this lore now. It's, it's, we have Bowser now. <laughs> I thought this yeah, was gonna Bowser. be his. Bowser. I thought this was gonna be his like great great grandfather or something. I don't know. I didn't think it was gonna. It was actually just gonna be Bowser in here. The more you know. <laughs> when Bowser came to, he was surrounded by the Goomba, the Goomba Shogun, and his ministers. And the Shogun asked what, where Bowser had made his floating castle, for the Goomba tribe was in in Solar? Oh, yeah. wait, hold on. I, yeah, was Insular. Insular, and had never seen such a thing before. Boa explained how much the world outside the Goomba sh Shogun had developed technology technologically, and about the army that was- <laughs> Fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> and about the arm- Oh fuck, I was- <laughs> And about the army that was coming to destroy them with many floating castles. The Goomba Shogun then detailed to Bowser that the Goomba military consisted of 10,000 foot soldiers, a thousand pair of Goombas, who were Goombas but with wings, and many- and many hundreds of Babams from the nearby Babam Mountain. Together with the Shogun, Bowser developed a plan to use the pair of Goombas to drop the bombs onto the airships and the human troops below. However, if the pair of Goombas attacked the human army all at the s one time, then the human army would be able to significantly would be able to significantly advantage. Oh shit! Advance when the pair of Goombas were resting. Bowser realized that by using a new strategy, where pair of Goombas would take turns resting and flying over the human army there would be a consistent assault on the human military. This strategy was tremendously successful and mir miraculously was able to be performed with no Goomba casualties. Though the Babans were very happy to be used as uh... Munition. Munition, thank you. <laughs> so you're telling me the Babams are excited to die? Is that what the, the, is that what's being said? <laughs> They're like, I can't wait to be murdered! <laughs> So I'm ready to serve. Yeah, my main goal is to blow up. <laughs> because of this novel strategy, the Goomba military was able to claim many of the human airships. The Goomba Shogun quickly agreed to send the Goomba military to free the Koopa tribe. 
It was an honorable thing to do after everything Boa had done for the Goomba people. After the airships first arrived to liberate the Koopa tribe, Dorio and his soldiers were unable to reach the airships with any other any of their weapons. After the decades of dominating the Koopa people, Dario had grown used to the submission of his enemies because of the threat of violence. Uh, coincidentally, N Nario had- Consequently. Oh, wait, what, fuck, what'd you say? <laughs> so, consequently, that's- Consequently, yes. Nario had grown compliance and- Had grown compliant- Complacent. Oh, thank you, compl complacent. Oh my god. <laughs> and not ready for an ex external attack. How could he how could he be? What country would bother to waste precious resources upon tacking upon taking action because of the moral or ethical beliefs? After a few of the soldiers died from the bombings, the rest decided to retreat. Mm -hmm. Even when Daria refused to allow it, the occupation Occupiers ultimately decided that above all else, they value their own lives and left in mass. After the battle was over, if you could even call it that, the newly freed Koopa people immediately accepted the uh, oh, legitimacy. Thank you, the legitimacy of Bowser as their leader. Okay, this is getting more and more modern. It's, well, I, I mean, Princess Toadstool is just Peach because that was her OG name. This is Bowser. Mm -hmm. When the fuck Mario gonna show up? <laughs> Where's Luigi? We'll get there. But I am impatient. <laughs> Keep reading. I'm trying. It's hard. But while the Koopa do you need a switch? Yeah, probably. And I think we're almost at the end, right? Yeah, there's two more paragraphs. Oh, I can yeah. do this. I'm so brave. Are you sure? I got you. But while the Koopa tribe had been freed, Bowser's fury. Fury hatred remained. Bowser filled the holes of his shells with spikes made from ivory of the human casualties. Damn, he just took one of their skulls and went, you know what would be really cool with this? If we made it into a spike. <laughs> and he believed that the vengeance must must be in, enacted for not only the humans, but also on those who chose to accept their rule. Because the human capital was far away from Bowser's land, than would be possible to reach with the amount of fuel that would be, be carried on- Wait, I'm fucked up that entire sentence. <laughs> because the human capital was further away from Bowser's land than could be possible to reach with the amount of fuel that could be carried in an airship, Bowser set his sights on the Mushroom Kingdom. In part, he, res he resented the ease in which they were able to maintain their culture by choosing to be subordinate themselves to humans but it was the crime of the Goomba uh, yeah it was the crime of the Goomba elites who made it that decision therefore the Goomba entities would have to suffer elites my elite the, the, the Goomba elites have to suffer <laughs> is it like their government is that what they mean by elites yeah this is which old fucks that are in the government and they're like those people gotta go <laughs> Because Bowser was part human, he would be able to gain the abilities of a toad by eating one of their spore eggs. It would allow him to fertilize the spore egg of the toad, uh... Matriarch. Matriarch, and thus produce the next rightful ruler of the toad tribe. So, Boa sent the, the Goomba ninjas to the Mushroom Palace to collect the egg of the toad matriarch queen toadstool. However, the ninjas made a mistake and accidentally brought the egg of Princess Peach, the queen's daughter who was studying uh, Mech... Megatronic. Meta Metatronics and engineering. Mecha. God damn it. Mecha... Megatronic. Mechatronics engineering at the mush... Like an, uh, like an animatronic. Yeah, I was saying that. Or a mecha. Mechatronic. Okay. <laughs> At the <laughs> I can hear you judging me all the way, like, tens of miles away. I can feel the judgment in the air. <laughs> I'm like, this, this bitch can't read. <laughs> Engineering at the Mushroom Applied Learning Center. 
Bowser named the child he bore Bowser Jr., but then realized through negative media reports that it was Peach's sport egg that had been stolen. Bowser was surprised of how con concerned he had be- Oh wait, fuck. Bowser was surprised about how concerned he became about the well-being of his child and resolved to do his best to build a good life for Bowser Jr. Yet, at the same time, Bowser gradually utilized his joint military to expand his influence and was cruel to those who ignored the plight of the of the Koopa under Nario. This was somehow less uh, reprehensible than the- Ooh! Look yeah. Oh my god, I did it! Now am I gonna fuck up this word? Uh, then the Arrow Cities? Atrocities. Atrocities. Oh, atrocities. That had been committed by Nario. But the freedom of the Koopa had been brought about because of the will of the the odd shrub spirit. That entity was cursed. So it. Wait. Yeah, that entity was cursed. So that every time its actions cause good, evil will be brought. Uh, will be brought about in in evil measure. <laughs> Let's go. I can read. <laughs> so I'm guessing in the in these last two, it, it's gonna be the end, man. Mm -hmm. This is so sad. Alexa, play Despacito right now. <laughs> I don't want the Bible to be over, man. Couldn't they write a sequel? <laughs> Call it Bible. Can they write a sequel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If the, if the Bible was so movie. good, why didn't they write a sequel, huh? Saying. You, ever, you know, maybe maybe an unfortunate event happened and then they couldn't do that. Yeah, I guess you're right. Alright. What what do you think so far? I think this is really good. I I'm rather enjoying it. Yeah, are you gonna be sad when it, when we have to read it again? It's gonna be like over. No, I mean all good things come to an end. Yeah, I guess you're right. Even Corazon. <laughs> like how he died. Yep. <laughs> See, we finished- we finished Law, we finished that other one. Wait, which one the- Fuck, we finished two I think books? we just finished the Law one. Yeah. I don't know. Now you got me second guessing. I don't know, I'm not keeping track. <laughs> me either. <laughs> and I'm the one doing all this shit. Uh... Yeah, I, don't, I think it's just been the law one so far that we finished, and then we just like, oh, let's do another law one. That was really good. <laughs> but honestly, right now. I guess that means we are. I'm stupid. Meh. Sorry. <laughs> what were you saying? But I'm like, for overall, for this book, I give it an 8 out of 10. I give it a I love the language used. I love how it progresses. Mm -hmm. Despite like slow, it keeps your attention. Yeah. I feel like like I want I want this pulled up like as a movie while I watch with like like popcorn because I can I can see the shots like from how they describe it and everything. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. But you know what? It's time for. The wheel. The wheel? Yeah, it's time for the wheel. Let's go, wheel time. <laughs> Alright, we have- there's a lot of options on here. We could get Mihawk x Shanks again. Minecraft minigame? Phoenix lore x Vol? <laughs> don't worry about that! It's- don't- don't look at that. <laughs> Wattpad book suggestion? Vodka Stop Google Photos? Stop reading <laughs> NDS ROM free. Oh, would you like that? We have a song. Pause Tencent Hotel. Don't worry about it. What, what is why? Don't ask me. Channel death. Don't worry Tencent. about it. Stop reading my tags. Movie <laughs> suggestions. Unintended consequences. Is that a fake or something? Another uh, work in progress. While we do Wait, un wait, which one are you talking? I don't know. Oh, it is. <laughs> it's a One Piece one. <laughs> There we go. Anyway, we got Zosan. <laughs> you, you just- I just spin the wheel and you're just like, oh, vacay photos, va- <laughs> Just reading off everything I on my just, screen. 
Yeah, absolutely. You gotta be, you gotta look, you gotta keep you on your toes. Yeah, you're like, what's that? When Is I that start your giving IP? your IP address. Yeah. <laughs> One, zero, zero. <laughs> no! <laughs> you're crazy sometimes, man. Do it. I guess so. <laughs> crazy. I was crazy once. God. They put me in a room. <laughs> They should have kept me in that room. <laughs> I was like, are you excited? This will be a brand new fanfiction for, for both of us. Like a Zoe Oh my god. Hopefully we get to finish the other soon. Yeah. Well, I like the Mihawk exchange. So we get to be like, oh my god, are they going to write a detailed, like, a scene? And then we're going to be like, yep, they did. <laughs> we'll be prepared. Because now that has brought us the experience we need to yeah. progress. I cannot wait. <laughs> I so I gotta find a, a Zosan book. I don't even have any like that are finished that I not like unfinished that I want to finish reading. If, if you catch my drift, like the other ones were like one shots mm -hmm. that I finished, and this other one that I wrote with Menho, we we got done with it for, like a second reading. I'm like, I don't think we're gonna put this on the wheel again. <laughs> God, I understand. Now I'm gonna have to do research. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pull out some shit, or we could add. It. SMG 3 4 on the wheel if you're interested in that. I'd rather put a gun in my mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't be mean about it. I'm just, I'm just saying. So I didn't <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> what's, what's so bad about it, huh? I got Elf to read it and he said it was pretty good. Elf is incredibly polite. Elf is so endearingly nice. Wow. I can't believe you said that too. I mean, he is, but like, that, that, that doesn't mean he's like. He is. <laughs> you, you make it sound like he's like, he was like too, too scared to be like, man, this is garbage. <laughs> no, he said he loved it. I'm gonna have to message him later. I'm like, do you actually like the book? <laughs> you make me second guess everything, Jolie. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we I was talking to Jolene, You're and, fine. and she said that You're you hated fine. me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me text to make sure he... <laughs> anyway, Jolene, thank you for joining me. I highly appreciate it. It was a pleasure. pleasure. Even, even though we, we won't be reading an SMG 3-4 fanfiction, I mean, it's fine and whatnot. I, I can't wait to uh -huh, have more uh -huh. on the channel. It's all good, man. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll get Heisen to read it. <laughs> If I ever get him back on here, I'll be like, perfect, I have the perfect fanfiction for you. <laughs> it's like love poison. He ain't my favorite fanfiction. <laughs> anyway, on, in the description is a bunch of links. I cannot be bothered to read them out. And then on screen somewhere is a playlist of all the other Wattpad book club readings that I've done with uh, with Jolene and other past uh, people as well. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check it out. <laughs> Jolene, do you have any final words? No. Have a, be safe. Uh, be don't drink and drive. Damn and it. don't do drugs. I was gonna do all of that. Jolene, you're no fun. <laughs> Alright, well my name is Phoenix, that was Jolene, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!